This is our 2008 Dodge Viper, and well, we really like this car. But of course we do. This is top speed. What I really want to talk about is how a car like this can actually make it into production because, well, this is a pretty big exotic and it comes from a company that's basically known for making minivans. And, well, this came about because every once in a while, everything just comes together perfectly. When this car was being developed in the late 80s, Bob Lutz, who's well, everybody's favorite car guy executive, he was working at Chrysler then. And not only that, but Chrysler has always been known for making sort of wild cars. And that's because, well, they've been the smallest of the big three. They always had to make these more attractive cars to stay in business. For example, think of the original Hemi cars. You had things like the Cuda, which came in wild colors and had big Hemi V8 engines. So their engineers were used to making these nice exotic cars. But something else was going on too. Chrysler had just absorbed AMC, American Motor Corporation. And AMC was much smaller than Chrysler. So their engineers were used to making even more attractive cars. Just wild things like the Pacer, the Gremlin, but they also proved that they could make fast cars with things like the Javelin. So you got, this, you got this core group of sort of wild engineers, you got a car guy executive, and this is what you get, an American Roadster. Now, the only problem though is that not everybody understands what an American Roadster means. It was Carroll Shelby who really first brought it to us, and that was with the Shelby Cobra. It really meant that you got a big engine, and just the seat to pilot that engine. Didn't get anything else. In fact, Carroll Shelby actually had a big hand in engineering this car. But when this came on the scene, everybody really took a look at it and loved it. The first thing is, it's just got that mean, menacing look that's just, well, it's just cool. The problem was, people didn't understand the American Roadster. Took a look at the car and they thought things were missing. They didn't like the fact that it had side curtains instead of actual side glass. It didn't have windows that rolled up and down. The top, well, it didn't even have a real top. Roadsters are not supposed to have a real top. And the original Viper came with just a little piece of fabric you could put up just to keep the weather out when the car was in park. The original Viper didn't even come with air conditioning. So people started complaining a little bit, and well, it's nothing new to Americans. In fact, when the first Austin Healy's came over, they actually didn't start selling until they fitted them with a proper roof and proper roll-up windows. The first Corvette almost got canceled after the first year because it had side glass instead of actual roll-up windows. So Dodge understood this and they started making a few exceptions. Next Generations came out, they actually had a full canvas roof, one that actually went up and down, complete, actually using all weather. The glass, real glass, goes up and down. The car even comes with air conditioning. But don't think this is a compromise. It still is, you get that big V10 engine, you still get a lot of quirkiness to this car. For example, Roadsters are all about the driving experience, all about the sounds you get, so the exhaust on the car is actually down here. It comes out down here, it's right by your ears, you get to hear that great throaty note. But the problem with that is, is that means the exhaust pipes run right down here, which that means when you drive the car a lot, the exhaust is gonna get hot. Well, the exhaust gets hot, these door sills get hot. And because this is a low-slung Roadster, well, you're gonna wanna put your hand on the door sills when you get out of the car. So after a long, hard drive, you put your hand on the door still, and it might even burn you a little bit. But that's what you're supposed to get at a Roadster. You get that big engine that you can sink your teeth into, but there are still those quirky little elements that make sure that this car can still bite back. So the whole point of an interior in a car like this is to really wrap around the driver. Now, you know what? Before anything else, there's something really missing. Take the top down, it's a little more complicated than you think. For starters, we gotta open up the trunk. Bring the top down manually. It's easy though with one hand. Then bring the trunk back down. See, that's much better. As I said before, this is a roadster, which means you're never supposed to have the top up unless it's extreme weather conditions. But getting back to the interior, the whole point is to really wrap around the driver. And one of the big things about that are the gauges. We got white on black gauges here that, well, they do a good job at night because they also glow white. But, well, quite frankly, you get all the same standard stuff you can get in any car. You're gonna get your tachometer, you're gonna get your speedometer, and you're gonna get your coolant temperature gauge. 
But one thing that you really want to know if you're going to drive this car hard, and trust me, you're going to drive this car hard, is you want to know how your oil is doing. So you also get gauges like your oil pressure and your oil temperature. These are absolutely essential. Other things are essential for driving your car hard. The gear lever here. What we've got is we've got one that's actually, it's got a big thick grip to it, it's got a lot of leverage, and that's what we need. We've got medium throws here, and when we're doing this much performance, we want a lot of leverage on this box, and that's exactly what we get. The steering wheel, it's grippy, it's good, it's just everything it's supposed to be. The one thing extra that we get are on the pedals. They're actually electronically adjustable. And while that's a luxury item, and we usually don't like luxury items in cars like this, when it's that functional, we're willing to make the exception. Another luxury item that's very functional are the seats we have here. They're leather bound, but they're also exactly what they're supposed to be. Sports seats. When you're sitting in them, they're not going to jar you around. You're planted and you're exactly where you want to be when you put this car through the corners. But, well, everything else in this car, everything else can just be frivolous and it's pretty much an afterthought, as it should be. Things like the air conditioning system. It doesn't need an air conditioning system. It's a roadster, but they still give you the system. It looks pretty much like the same thing you can get on lesser Chrysler cars, but it's just there, just so you can feel like you have that feel of premium. Same thing with the radio. We've got a 310 watt, seven speaker stereo. We don't need that, as I said before. There's an exhaust note sitting right over my shoulder here, and that's what you're gonna be listening to the whole time. But they still give you the radio. It even has a DVD nav screen in it. The difference, it's not a touch screen. You have to operate from the buttons on the side. And well, the screen is actually very small. But the whole point here is that they just want to make you feel, well, that you're getting a lot for your money when you spend over $90,000 on this car. But the whole point is, is that this interior really is just one big gateway to get to that great engine. So what I've been talking about this whole time is the engine, the engine, the engine. And why? Because it's a good one. 8.4 liter, 600 horsepower, 450 foot-pound of torque, V10 engine. This thing's a beast. It actually originally started out life as a truck motor. But now that it's in a light sports car body like this, it just begs to be played with. So who are we to deny it? Now, we can't go too fast though because we are still on city streets that are regulated by speed laws. And that's actually the interesting thing about this car. We got a six-speed manual transmission. And well, quite frankly, I can do 70 miles an hour in third gear and still accelerate. That means that basically the top half of the gears, well, you're only going to really be using them if you're speeding. That's basically like saying four through six are there as illegal gears. And that's what makes this car really cool. And that's what makes it worth the $90,000 or so you put down on it. In fact, by comparison, another car that we had in our fleet, the Jaguar XKR, well, that one costs about the same amount of money, but a very different personality. Where that one was more an everyday car, had a lot more creature comforts, but it also only had about 420 horsepower. That means this has 180 more. Well, where that all amounts to, it amounts to in personality. It's almost like, well, the Jaguar was, if it showed up to a party, it was that sort of a gentleman's car, the kind of thing where everybody would be happy to see it. It's well-dressed, it's suave, and it's very sociable. The Viper, on the other hand, when it shows up to the party, it's the guy there looking for the fight. And that's why we love this car. It's big, it's brutish, and it's built for one purpose. Nothing but speed. So the whole point of this car is nothing but speed, 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 and everything's geared toward on this car. But the suspension, it's a bone-chattering ride when you're just in the city, but when you're at speed, it's gonna hunker down. It's gonna make sure that you have complete control of the car when you're really going fast. Same thing can be said about the steering. The steering is very heavy when you're going slow, but when you're going fast, you actually know exactly where you're controlling the car, and you know that you can move it well. So the brakes have the same exact idea. It's like throwing out a boat anchor. It's gonna really stop you, and it's all built for this one purpose of speed. So with that said, this really isn't a car you're gonna be driving in an urban environment, because if you do, you're not gonna be happy. Your ankle's gonna hurt, because the clutch is gonna be too heavy. The ride is gonna hurt your back. But that's not what this car is made for. This car is made for straight line, going fast, being illegal, or at least going to places where you can do a lot legally. This car actually tops out at about 200 miles an hour. So you got a lot of room to go in this thing, and that's what you really want. You just want one of those cars that really goes like hell.